it's finally here, the Pi 5. I'm going to use it to control my CNC router using Linux CNC. This custom built CNC router has used a Dell PC to run Linux CNC to translate the G code into toggled outputs on the parallel port. It ran a Xylotex driver board to convert the parallel port pins to high current bipolar outputs to the stepper motors. The best thing about this system was definitely Linux CNC. The graphical user interface made it easy to know what the router was going to do. Why did I want to switch to the Raspberry Pi? Let me explain. First, I have always been leery about the longevity of a large personal computer. Lots of items have limited lifespan, including capacitors on the motherboard, the hard drive, fans, and power supply. Using a solid state solution like the Raspberry Pi, without any electrolytic capacitors, mechanical hard drives, or onboard fans is an ideal solution for many years of reliability. Plus, if it does go bad, it's under $80 to get a new one. Second, I wanted to upgrade this router with two major improvements. The first improvement would be spindle control. I have always used a potentiometer to control the spindle speed manually outside of Linux CNC. Using the new setup, Linux CNC will be able to control the spindle speed. The second improvement is the addition of limit switches. Using the old parallel port to Xylotex board setup did not leave many inputs to wire up the limit switches. This machine may be a little bit different than yours, but I think this upgrade is something that can be done to lots of machines. Since I am no longer using the Xylotex stepper driver board, I chose to use some inexpensive stepper drivers from Amazon. I use a 24 volt DC power supply for the steppers and a 48 volt DC power supply for the spindle. I added a separate 5 volt supply just to power the Pi through the USB-C cable that I cut up so I could screw the cable onto the power supply terminals. I like the idea of using readily available parts whenever possible. The 5-axis parallel port breakout board looked like a great solution for all the limit switch inputs and stepper outputs. It also had a relay that could be used for controlling my spindle. The only thing stopping me from using it was that the, that the Raspberry Pi did not have a parallel port. While there weren't many Pi parallel port hats available on the market, so the last option was to make one myself. This is the CNC parallel port hat for the Raspberry Pi. It converts the 3.3 volt I.O. pins on the Pi header to 5 volt outputs on the DB25F connector. This board was built and tested to work with a 5 axis breakout board, so it may not work as a generic parallel port for other projects. This CNC parallel port hat also has two of its own spindle control means. The first version of this board did not have any way to control the spindle because the breakout board had a relay on it and everything was supposed to work great, right? Well, it turns out that the inductive nature of my 300 watt spindle causes too much kickback voltage and it welded the relay contacts together after about three runs. Since it's kind of a bad thing if your spindle won't shut off, I really wanted a better solution. Looking at the internals of the manual spindle potentiometer that I had been using, it looked like a MOSFET with a high enough current and voltage rating was all that was necessary. In the end, the MOSFET is able to control the speed of the DC spindle, which is much more than I was hoping for with the on-off control that the relay would have provided. Also worth noting is the 5-axis breakout board has a PWM or analog output that can also tell the VFD how fast to run the spindle. So the hardware exists for both means of control and it's just up to the software settings to get the job done. I know that the Pi 5 is supposed to have a much higher CPU temperature, so I thought it would be best to get the Canakit heatsink and fan. Using the included double-sided thermal stickers, I tried putting the heatsink on the Pi 5. After pressing for a few seconds, I noticed that the heatsink was not making contact with all of the chips that it was supposed to make contact with. The main processor is definitely the tallest of the heat sinkable parts, so it makes contact with the heat sink just fine. Everything else is not sticking correctly. The heat sink fan also plugs into the Pi 5, but the wires on the fan are not long enough to place the fan off to the side like what is needed when using hats. 
At first, I thought the fan would include screws or something that the fan could mount directly to the heatsink, but I didn't see any mechanical means of mounting the fan. My plan is to get the Pi 5 running on the router, then revisit the heatsink and fan issue at a later time. A 25 pin cable can be used to connect the CNC parallel hat to the 5 axis breakout board, but I prefer the most compact solution available, so I wanted to plug the breakout board directly into the hat. I did need to unscrew some of the mounting standoffs from the CNC parallel hat so the two would fit together. Also worth noting is that the 5 volt USB power input on the 5 axis breakout board will not be usable. Per the USB specification, it should have been a B style female plug, not an A female, so I am against it in principle too. The 5 volt to the board will need to be supplied on one of the screw terminals. In order to hold the 5 axis breakout board, I designed a 3D printed stand for both boards. This seemed to work quite well and I was worried that the print would delaminate as the screws were tightened, but as long as I don't over tighten, it seems to hold just fine. The standard Pi standoffs can screw directly into the plastic. There are specific SD card images from Linux CNC for the Pi 4 and Pi 5. Make sure you download the correct one. I use the Raspberry Pi Imager software to burn the image into the micro SD card. I installed the assembly into my router's electrical box and powered up. The older Dell LCD monitor that I was using started up at 640 by 480 resolution. This was not going to work. Luckily, I found a HD monitor with the HDMI input at the local thrift store that worked just fine. After powering up, I noticed that the Pi 5 did not have any latency issues that the Pi 4 did. I am using the latest build for the Pi 5, so perhaps something got fixed since the time I downloaded the Pi 4 image. The first thing I did was to copy the machine config folder to the new micro SD card and attempt to run Linux CNC. It crashed. The debug log mentions something not having access to the GPIO mem file. The error message suggested that the permissions were not set correctly, so I tried setting the permissions and that didn't work either. One of the great things about Linux CNC is the user community. I found a forum post with the solution for this exact problem. It turns out that the Pi 5 handles GPIO much more like a standard computer would, and not a special way like, like the Pi 4 did. The solution was to remove all of the HAL underscore Pi underscore GPIO references from the HAL file and replace them with HAL underscore GPIO references. The pin number syntax after the period also changed. This worked great and the CNC router worked. The last thing that I was looking for out of the Pi 5 is difficult to measure, but I was hoping that the user interface would feel a little bit more responsive than the Pi 4. After noticing the snappiness of the Pi 5 on the latest build of Linux CNC, I downloaded the latest build for the Pi 4 and gave it a try. The sluggishness that I experienced earlier was gone. But I do admit that the Pi 5 did feel a lot better in terms of the user interface responsiveness. I have copies of the HAL files on my website that you can download and use an example for setting up your machine. All of the pin numbers for the Raspberry Pi will stay the same, so it's mainly a matter of determining how your spindle operates and if you intend to use the limit switches the same way I do. A lot of the config file is commented out and hopefully it provides some helpful insights on how to implement a different setup. So that about wraps it up. I am pleased with the Pi 5 running my CNC router. It should be much more stable and an inexpensive long-term solution. If you have any questions about my setup or how to upgrade your machine, please comment below. If this video was helpful, please tap the like button so the YouTube algorithm can suggest this video to others. Thank you so much.